Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Who does Labour have to beat to win the next election? The Conservatives, who've pledged to be the party to take us out of the EU at the end of next month, with or without a deal. The Lib Dems, who are now minded to revoke Article 50 and commit to ignoring the referendum result to keep us in the EU. The Brexit Party, who might reach parts of Labour the Conservatives cannot reach, or the SNP, who might use Brexit as a warning to strengthen their own message of independence. What Brexit position Labour commits to on its manifesto will tell us where the party believes its battles lie. But could the biggest battle be the one the Labour Party is fighting with itself? Jeremy Corbyn confirmed today that Labour would hold a second referendum if they won an election, with a choice to remain in the EU or to accept a credible deal to leave. But tomorrow comes a fresh salvo from the party's deputy leader, Tom Watson, who will call for another referendum before an election's held. Is he trying to jump his leader into campaigning for Remain? Can Boris Johnson resist that new demand? There's plenty Labour wants to discuss that isn't Brexit. Nick Watt was in Brighton for the leader's speech at the trade union conference. Silence in the cockpit of democracy. So down to the seaside for political debate. Naturally, one subject hung in the air. A Trump deal Brexit would be a betrayal of the generations of workers who went before. But the man who's blunted some of Boris Johnson's shock and awe tactics on Brexit is not taking sides. A general election is coming. But we won't allow Johnson to dictate the terms. And in that election, we will commit to a public vote with a credible option to leave and the option to remain. Clarity on stage one, a referendum on a new Brexit deal negotiated by a Labour government. Less clarity on stage two, as leading frontbenchers indicate they would campaign against that Labour deal in favour of Remain. A Labour movement divided on Brexit launches the political conference season with some frustration towards Jeremy Corbyn for facing both ways on Brexit. But he believes that if Labour is to stand any chance of winning the general election, it has to make inroads in leave-leaning areas in the Midlands whilst holding on to the gains it made in Remain seats in other parts of the country. A nuanced position which contrasts with an unequivocal pledge from the Liberal Democrats to reverse Brexit. If people really want an end to this Brexit mire, the way to do that is to stop Brexit. Are you happy with Jeremy Corbyn's position on Brexit? All a bit uncomfortable for trade union leaders like Manuel Cortes with severe doubts about Brexit. Enjoying the last rays of summer. Yes, I best take my glasses off now that I'm inside. C can I ask you? Corbyn supporters you are pleased. Position on Brexit. Oh well, Jeremy's position, uh, his speech today was fantastic. On workers' side, this man, when he becomes prime minister, is going to transform our nation and is going to heal the divisions within our nation. What do you say to the argument that the party's sort of unclear, leaning both ways on Brexit? Jeremy I don't Corbyn. think that's true at all. I think Jeremy is one of these individuals who listens. The trade union position in a general election at the moment is that we should go in and negotiate a, a deal, take that deal back on a confirmatory vote to the people with uh, Remain on the ballot paper as well. A perfectly principled, correct thing to do. And obviously, once we see what the deal is, that's when Labour will determine whether they are going to recommend it. I'm optimistic that we can do a deal that unites the nation, that actually uh, alleviates the fears of the 48% and uh, respects the 2016 referendum. But we'll wait and see. Your great comrade, John McDonnell, he's talking about Labour winning the election, renegotiating that deal and then he would campaign against that Labour negotiated deal and campaign for Remain. Yeah, I don't think that's necessarily uh, the right way to go about it. I mean, and we'll have to wait to see what Labour's position emerges as. If it's, if Labour, if the Labour Party at the Labour conference and if Jeremy Corbyn embraces the trade union position, it'll be one where we go in and negotiate, see what the deal is like and then decide whether you're recommending it or whether you're 
uh, rejecting it or whether you're adopting a neutral position. One Corbyn ally will support Remain in all circumstances. Personally, I'm a Remainer. I would, I would vote for Remain, but I don't see why Jeremy Corbyn shouldn't be given the opportunity to go to Brussels and see what else might happen. Without a doubt, the question of the Irish border is an, a huge and significant issue, and we haven't seen this current government do anything to improve that situation. So I believe that it would be right for the Labour Party to look at that. Peace by the seaside but no end in sight to the Brexit divisions in Britain's two main parties. Uh, Nick Waters here, away from the piece by the seaside now. We're hearing of Tom Watson, Labour's deputy leader, making a speech tomorrow that could really throw the cat amongst the pigeons, Nick. Yes, as you were saying, Labour's deputy leader is going to say that there should be a referendum before the general election, and this you could see as both helpful and unhelpful to Jeremy Corbyn. It's helpful because it's saying, let's get Brexit out of the way before the general election, which means that you, Jeremy Corbyn, can fight that election on Labour issues. And uh, he knows that uh, Jeremy Corbyn is quite nervous about fighting a general election that would be dominated by Brexit. Where it is unhelpful for Jeremy Corbyn is if there is a referendum and before the election, it would be on the Tory deal and he would be bound to campaign for Remain in that election. And Jeremy Corbyn would be unwary and unhappy about that because he wants to appeal to both Remainers and Leavers. So what news from Jeremy Corbyn himself this evening? Well, what we learned today, as I was reporting, is that Jeremy Corbyn and the trade union leadership have agreed on that position that you were talking about, that in government there would be a referendum with Remain on the ballot and what he's described as a credible leave option. Now, the problem with that is that there are leading members of the Shadow Cabinet, John McDonnell and Emily Thornbury, and what they're saying is they would join that cabinet, they would negotiate a new deal with the EU and then they would campaign against it because they're going to campaign for Remain. I understand that if Jeremy B. Corbyn becomes Prime Minister, he will follow the example of Harold Wilson in 1975 and David Cameron in 2016 and offer a free vote to members of his cabinet. They can campaign for what they want. And the idea behind that is to say at the next general election, Labour provides a home for both Remain and Leave supporters. Fascinating, Nick. Thanks very much indeed. Well, joining us now is Mark Sawatka, the General Secretary of the Public and Commercial Services Union, also President of the Trades Union Congress. He's down the line from Brighton, where the TUC Congress is being held. And from Newcastle, we're joined by the Labour MP for Newcastle upon Tyne North, Catherine McKinnell, a leading campaigner for a second referendum and for Labour to back Remain. Good to have you both. Mark, if I can just start with you. Can you confirm what Nick's just told us then, that Jeremy Corbyn uh, would be allowing a free vote to cabinet members to choose which side of that referendum they would back? Uh, well, good evening, Emily. Uh, no, I certainly can't confirm that. I'm not in the shadow cabinet. I'm a trade union leader. What I can confirm is that Jeremy did a brilliant speech to the TUC and what he set out, I think, can be the only common sense position is that we want an election because we want to get rid of this rotten Conservative government. We want to fight for funding for the NHS, for schools, for our councils, for our communities. We want trade unions to have rights at work for their members. And we recognise that the country voted 52-48, that the trade union movement itself, 60% of our members voted to stay, 2.5 million voted to leave. We know that that is an issue the country is divided on. So what Jeremy is saying is let's have an election on the issues of austerity, of the type of society we want, and let's say to the British people that I, unlike Theresa May or her calamitous government, will go to Europe, will negotiate in good faith, and we will put to the British people what we get in those negotiations. And my view as a trade union negotiator is you can only really decide what you say about the outcome when you've had the negotiations themselves. And it's what's a... wrong, frankly, with Tom Watson's position tonight is it's a huge gamble. And it's a gamble with the future of this country because it's an all-or-nothing binary choice that I think is completely wrong and perpetuates the divide that we've seen for the last three years. Well, hang on. The, the, what, what Tom Watson is basically doing is saying all these things, all these policies, all the things that Labour really cares about and really wants to get right can be dealt with in good faith once the whole Brexit issue is out of the way. It's just a cleaner way of doing it, isn't it? 
Well, it's only cleaner if what you're really saying is that you'll have that election and then we'll take a big gamble on the outcome. I think Tom Watson would agree with the entire trade union movement a no-deal Brexit is absolutely calamitous and nobody voted for it. So why should we now have a referendum with a binary choice that is the result of Theresa May's calamitous efforts and Boris Johnson's desire to do trade deals with Donald Trump and not care about the consequences for the British people. That's a gamble because that is a divisive move. What Jeremy Corbyn wants is to unite people about the type of country that we want to live in. Y you may not be able to do that with the message that you're trying to get across. You know it will come down to something that the public understand. You know that Dominic Cummings will fight the election with three words. He'll say, tell them again. And Joe Swinson will say, revote Article 50. And Labour will say something along the lines of, vote for us and we'll hold another referendum and we'll try and negotiate a new deal with the EU. That will be better. And then you can choose between that one or remaining. It's not punchy on the doorstep. Well, you know, the trouble with these binary choices is actually what you get is what you got last time. Lots of lies were told, lots of people were misled. It wasn't a proper thoughtful discussion. And I don't want to go to Sunderland or the South Wales Valleys or the southwest of England and say your choice is Joe Swinson, by the way, who voted for all the austerity measures and cuts when she was in government, or Boris Johnson and Dominic Cummins. What I want people to have is decent schools, but hospitals, councils, forgive me, a though, society that is united. But what you got last time, if you'll remember, uh, was terrible results in the local elections, terrible results in the European elections. You have road-tested this election strategy to destruction already. It doesn't work for your party. Well, I think what we agree today, the trade union movement, is that we're going to get into every community and we're going to say to people, the most important issue in your life cannot be a one-off choice about in or out of Europe and nothing else matters. What matters in Sunderland is the size of the classrooms, the local hospitals, the roads, the council services. And yes, Europe matters, but people should have what Jeremy called today a credible choice, not a disastrous no-deal Brexit or everything stays as it always was. Because what Tom needs to remember is Labour's position was last time that in the referendum it was to reform the European Union. So the real decent thing to do to people is not say you must pick one option or the other. It is to say let's have a fairer would society, <laughs> get the best we can out of Europe and then give people a meaningful choice. Um, and would you Dominic Cummings doesn't want that and Tom Watson is gambling in my view and it's a big mistake. Would you prefer Tom Watson to shut up at this point? Well, I think the uh, role of a deputy leader is to be loyal to the party and the people who put him there in the first place. And frankly, I think his intervention is irresponsible. It is a big gamble and it is not what Labour communities need. Catherine McKennell, I wonder what you make of that. It does suggest that Labour's own deputy leader doesn't think Labour can actually win before this is done. Do you share that fear? So, I mean, the first thing I want to say is it's incredible that I'm speaking to you here from Newcastle rather than being down in Parliament this week and actually holding our Prime Minister Boris Johnson to account with my parliamentary colleagues for his promises to renegotiate a deal um, on Brexit with the European Union. Um, but we are where we are. And I think we are in agreement that um, the voters do need a real choice but i think the question is how best can we resolve this brexit crisis and is that through a general election or is that through a focused campaign on how to resolve brexit as an issue because i think it's unfair to ask the voters to make a decision on this crucial issue in amongst all of those other things that, yes, we all care about deeply, our NHS, our public services, what kind of Britain we want, what kind of future we sure. want for the next five years. But and so we, we need to resolve this Brexit question so that we can get on with that. And I think that's what the public want. You're probably not going to resolve that with a divided party. You've just heard a leading trade unionist leader called the deputy leader irresponsible. He's making a speech tomorrow morning which will directly contradict what Jeremy Corbyn said today and put his own leader in a very difficult position. 
I'm not sure it does directly contradict. I think um, Boris Johnson has prorogued Parliament deliberately so that he can go around the country and begin his general election campaign. He wants a general election because he doesn't want um, to have to do his homework. So he doesn't want to have to, have to be getting on with his negotiations. Message. That's all Labour has to do. You the are big, Her Majesty's opposition. You just need to be at one on this. The big, yeah, the big focus for all of us has to be to stop us crashing out with a disastrous no deal. That's been the focus of Parliament then um, what? for uh, in then the few what? days that we have sat. And when we come back, that is still a focus because we still have that deadline looming on the 31st of October and we will have all sorts of movements, as you can see, lots of unprecedented activity within Parliament yeah. when we return. So we need to be laser focused on holding this government to account for its promises to the renegotiate a Brexit deal so that we have something to put to the British public so they can decide well, whether that is the Brexit that the they British still want. The British public have seen a deal and it has seen a deal go before Parliament three times and it has seen Labour refuse to endorse or vote for that deal. The, the trouble is that you are asking the public to look at you and say we're different to the Conservatives. You're not really. You're both ripping yourselves apart at a time when voters, frankly, cannot stomach any more. I mean, we, we have to come together as a parliament and as a country to find a way through this Brexit crisis. Now, my view's been very clear, and there is a compromise available, that whatever Brexit deal is negotiated, and Boris Johnson has said he's got all sorts of ideas up his sleeve, we haven't seen any evidence. We've seen um, resignations from people very close to him that indicate he is not true to his word, but that is his job for the next few days, okay. uh, next few weeks, and we put it back to the British public to decide, and Parliament, can pass that through to the British public for them to make the decision about how they want this Brexit crisis resolved. Thank you. Thank you both very much indeed. Thanks for joining us.